figured I'd wear a collared shirt, you know, talk about corporate interviews and all. Step one, location. Corporate interviews are definitely one of those things in video production that you want to be familiar with because they make you money. And money's a good thing. Now, these examples aren't great, but these little clips made me 1600 bucks in about two and a half hours of my time. There was no pre-production, no post-production, and the actual interview was only about 20 minutes long. Yes, sir, and that's why they're a staple in the video production industry. Now, corporate interviews typically follow industry standards, which I will go over, but just because you can compose a moody, contrasting image does not always mean that you should. More often than not, you're provided the room or location to work with, but if you do have the option to choose the location, then you wanna pick a place with some spatial depth. Deep dimensions with interest in the foreground, midground, and background. Or at least pick something that vaguely embodies the content in which the subject will discuss in the interview. Step two, composition and camera setup. For composing your setup, you'll want to look for points of interest. For example, textures and patterns. There's a lot of lines in this image. Vertical ones that frame our subject, as well as horizontal ones that kind of point to the subject. These are called leading lines. All right, in this one, the texture enables the subject to stand out because his head is breaking the consistent pattern from the wallpaper. How about colors? Notice the complementing warm and cool tones in this setup. For blues, you have the window, the illuminated display in the back, and the guy's shirt. And for warmer tones, there's whatever this object is, the lamp, and my homie's skin. You might have noticed that I have contrasting colors in my setup too. Complementary colors like orange and blue in this setup naturally add contrast to an image. What to do with the camera? You'll want to go with a two camera setup if possible so that you can break up the monotony of a single shot. But if you have one camera, you can punch in and out in post-production to still diversify the shot some. For the setup, establish a wide and a tight angle on the same side of the subject's face while also giving them what's called leading space or looking room. His or her eyes should line up on the intersecting top third. The reason that this framing is standard is because the top third offers enough headroom without there being too much and leading space gives a feeling of openness and feels natural. This is what it looks like without leading space or looking room and it feels cramped and unnatural. You'll want to have your subject looking just off camera at the interviewer. Yes, you can have them look directly into the lens as I am now, but I also have unlimited mulligan sitting here doing this by myself. Part of your job in setting up these interviews is to get the subject or person being interviewed as comfortable as humanly possible. And any person that has ever existed is more comfortable talking to another human than they are talking to a camera lens. Also, it's a stylistic choice to break the fourth wall. Again, I cannot stress this enough. Unless you are intentionally going against industry standards for a stylistic choice, it's best just to stick to standard practices. Step three, lighting. Good old three-point lighting setup. The light should be projected at a 45 degree angle to take away any unflattering shadows. Even if you're in a hurry, you'll still want to key light the subject. That way they stand out a little bit more from the rest of the image and it focuses the viewer's attention on the subject. You can also use a Windows natural light for the key. The softer the lighting, the more flattering for the subject. And yes, they are paying you, so go ahead and soften up that light if possible. You can accomplish this through a couple different ways like diffusion or indirect bounce lighting. Oh, and real quick, use a practical if possible. It goes so far in adding depth to an image. Lastly, shoot shadow side, which means placing your camera on the opposite side of your key light. You'll notice that the darker side of my face is facing the camera. Shooting shadow side creates greater dimension within the frame. My example that I showed earlier was not shot shadow side. I didn't have the space on the other side to put my light, so keep in mind these suggestions are just that, suggestions. You have to work with what you got. Step four, audio. I prefer using a boom, but if you use a lav mic, don't try and hide the thing unless you're skilled at doing so because the worst possible thing that can happen on set is that you don't get any audio. Yep, it is much worse than not having a picture. If you're using a boom, place the microphone in between eight and 12 inches away from your subject, aimed at what's called the pocket, which is in between the mouth and the chest. You may have heard that you're supposed to get the microphone as physically close to somebody's mouth as possible, and there's good reason why they say that, 
but that's not how we naturally hear people's voices in conversation. Think about it like a conversation. You don't talk to people two inches away from their faces. Well, maybe you do. And as far as audio levels go, you're aiming for dips of negative 18 decibels and peaks of negative six decibels. Step five, press record.